Hi, you guys, and welcome. I'm Dr. Carissa Yeager, the host for Embrace Your Unique Self, Discover Inner Healing Practices to Trust Your Intuition, Reclaim Self-Worth, and Love the Skin You're In. And today's wonderful expert is Mary O'Malley. Mary is an author, teacher, and counselor whose work awakens others to the joy of feeling fully alive. Her inspired and transformative approach to be with life no matter what's happening offers a way to replace fear, hopelessness, and struggle with ease, well-being, and joy. Mm -hmm. So thank you so much, Mary. Thank you for being here. I really appreciate that you carved some time out of, out, out of your day for me and for the audience, too. I really appreciate you and welcome you here. It's my joy, Clarissa. It really is because this, I love, I love the title you know, embracing. That's such a wonderful, round, uh, soft, but powerful word. And then uh, embracing ourselves, which is hard to do sometimes. But then you end it with love the skin you're in, you know, and we as women, boy, we have been taught the exact opposite. So thank you. Yeah, of course, of course. I think it's funny because as I am connecting with women all over the world because I've had experts from Mexico City and Dubai and it's mm. just so amazing because a lot of so many of us are having this conversation right now it is in fact a global conversation and it's just interesting how our consciousness is changing and how the yes. lens of how we function in the world is turning inward yeah yeah it's like life is a tree you know, and it send down roots on this planet and then slowly and surely a trunk and branches and leaves. And now it is the flowering. And to me, the flowering comes when the mind comes home to the heart. The mind without the heart gets us into trouble. And all you have to do is look at history to see the truth of that. And I was interviewed for a really interesting book a number of years ago where they took uh, they went and gathered 600 of the leading edge research papers on the fact that we have three brains, head brain, heart brain, and gut brain. Yes. And by far, all the research said the main brain is the heart brain. Yes. And so we are spreading that, that message and, and living in the question, how can we come home to our wise, wise heart? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Or, uh, the energy I know I from um, so I'm a Reiki master as well so I do talk a lot about the energy of the heart and mm -hmm. how because our heart is electrical in, mm -hmm. in nature um, anything that's electric emits an energy field around it and so the energy that is what is responsible for the some people say three foot some people say four foot energy field that all of us have yeah so, yeah yeah. And um, I love that you said like that connection, like you were using the imagery of roots and just like connecting and connecting and connecting because yeah. I mean, yeah. ultimately everything is connected inside the body and outside of the body. Outside. Absolutely. And we have put armoring around our hearts because we had to, mm -hmm. you know, there wasn't, most of us were raised by you know, we, they call them parents. I call them unconscious giants. You know, you think <laughs> about how little we were and how big they were. Mm -hmm. And most of them, I mean, all of us have gather what we call the sacred wounding when we are young. And so we're raised by parents that are trying to ignore, deny, run away from their sacred wound. So they wound us in ways they don't even know they wound us. And so slowly and surely, it became unsafe for this wise, wise, nourishing, intelligent heart brain. It had to close down. And I almost died from how far away I tried to get away from myself and all the pain. And then for whatever grace there is, life began to show me the journey back and then how to, how to see through the armoring. The armoring is made out of shame and guilt and expectations and this comparison, mm -hmm. you know, that we see ourselves as less than. 
And what I've discovered on this journey back to myself and back to my heart is that none of that is true. Those were just perceptions that we took on when we were young, when we were raised by these unconscious giants, that we didn't have a fairy godmother that came into the window every night and said, tell me about your day. And she listened. And then she gave us a different perspective. And so we didn't have that. So the energy of <gasps> began to settle around our heart. And then we went to our mind, which is a doing machine. And I'm not knocking the mind. It's a only took the universe 13.4 billion years to figure out how to make it. But it's a wonderful tool for maneuvering through reality. Mm -hmm. It is not as horrible as a master. And wow. so how can we begin to release the armory around our hearts so that we can use our mind rather than being lost in it? Yeah, I think that's a really important point because so many people are unlearning mm -hmm. how to do what they've been doing or unlearning how they've been being and right. trying to figure out how, new ways to do that that we establish this connection so it's a little bit more heart-centered versus a little yes. bit more heart -centered. yeah 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 and in my latest book what's in the way is the way i tell people you don't even need to read the book just live the title yeah. because my experience is and i just finished a radio show uh about the truth of love and I, and it's called uh our deepest longing and our deepest truth and I go to Einstein and Eckhart Tolle, who wrote The Power of Now, and uh, Evan Alexander, who wrote uh, um, Proof of Heaven, and Anita Morjani, who wrote uh, uh, Dying to Be Me, and myself, and Adi Ashanti. All of us were cracked open. And what we discovered is we are love. And we are loved. That what Einstein says is such an amazing letter is that he says it's to his daughter. And he said, this is the only power that human beings haven't figured out how to control because it is uncontrollable and it lies at the heart of absolutely everything. Mm -hmm. And so how can we come home to that? First of all, to realize that the this judger voice inside of us that we all have that compare us to some mythical idea of what we should be. That judger voice never speaks the truth ever. I know it's very seductive. It convinced me to try to kill myself uh, three times. You know, I was just a worthless human being. I had no value. I had less than no value. And then slowly and surely, life began to show me how to begin to watch that voice. And I wrote in my first book, Belonging to Life, about, uh, there's a great chapter called Disarming the Judger. And I made four main points. I don't know if I can remember them all. But the first was, everybody has it. The second is, it never speaks the truth. Mm. And I gave this image that I just absolutely love of you are uh, in a downtown area and they're, they're digging a big hole to, to do a, uh, a new building. And so they put uh, plywood around it, you know, and, and a walkway so you don't fall into the hole. And then they put holes in the plywood. <laughs> and what happens is that you look through this hole and you see a pile of garbage and you just, this is horrible, this is a bad run, so I'm gonna go to the city and say they have to shut this down. And what you don't realize is that you see the place where they have spent the day bringing all the garbage into one place so that the garbage truck could pick it up the next morning. That's what it is like to begin to see that your, this judging quality, it doesn't know the truth. It comes up with one plus one and it equals seven and a half. And I believed it for a long, long time. But when I began to really look, I saw, I mean, I used to, I used to think I was really ugly, so ugly.
that I wouldn't go get my hair cut because you had to look into a mirror. I wouldn't wear makeup because you had to look into a mirror. And the first time I ever saw my face, which is not an ugly face, but I saw ugliness, the judger. I saw the judger. And one night I was laying in bed and I had my bed over by the, the window so I could look at the stars at night. And I turned to turn off the light and I saw a face in the window. And I wasn't expecting to see my face. And so the judger didn't have time to configure. And that was the first time I saw through this arm ring around my heart that I am a piece of shit. Excuse my French, but that was what it was like. And that gave me the fuel to begin to get to know this judging quality that we all carry that never, ever speaks the truth, ever. I think that's so, thank you for emphasizing that because I think some people hear that voice, but they don't, they're not fully conscious of how it is running them and yes. how it is impacting their actions and how it is impacting the way that they are being. So I think that's, yeah. And I think, I think some, I think you hit the nail on the head that says the judger does not speak the truth. No, no. In fact, I'll use that word again. When I first began to unhook from that voice, my mantra was, you don't know shit. Mm. And it gave me, it gave me just this little bit of space. Oh my God. Now I don't see that anymore because my heart is open because the judger was created when we were very young because you are the center of the universe when you are very young. And when things are off in your family, you decide you are the one to blame. We all did this. And so then we start down this merry path of there's something wrong with me. And the judger comes in to try to whip us into shape. Oh my God, you know, you're so stupid. You know, Go read a book or whatever. And so the judger was created in order to try to take care of us but it eventually takes over. And each one of us is a unique expression of life. And each one of us has a thread in the tapestry of life that nobody else does. So that's why I say this is the most important task we've been given in life, is to fall in love with ourselves. And it's the work of a lifetime. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, and you're right. It's never done because we'll always find other things to sort of, yeah. you know, using the example of the onion, there's always more layers to yeah. peel back and expose yeah. Yeah. more parts of ourselves. Yeah. And to bring home to our hearts. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. The heart has room for everything. The mind doesn't. It's dualistic. All you have to do is see what's happening in the United States around politics or even in Britain around politics, and you see all this polarization. The mind is dualistic. It likes this, it doesn't like that. It thinks this is good, that is bad, this is right, this is wrong. And it just gets us into a pickle. Whereas the heart has room for everything. The heart doesn't judge, it doesn't compare. And it is the greatest gift that life can give us to hear this kind of conversation to know that no matter where you are in your life, because you are hearing this, you are on the journey back home to your heart. Just even as you say that, it just feels so soft and so expansive and so welcoming and like rings with truth. Mm -hmm. So that's mm -hmm. yeah. the ultimate truth, yeah. Yeah, I once set out a, a list and, I, and there was about 20 words that describe the heart and, you know, allowing, welcoming, accepting, mm -hmm. um, compassionate, uh, non-judgmental, empathy. I, it's just so wonderful. I led a retreat in Hawaii once and the, the theme was all is welcome here. And I put it these signs all over the retreat center. And a woman came in one day and she said, you know what I hear when I read that sign? All is well, come here. 
when we learn how to welcome all the parts that we put out of our heart, when we learn to discover that absolutely everybody else has those parts, one of my mentors said that I'm going to create a hat and when you put it on your head, it's going to instantaneously broadcast over a loudspeaker all of your thoughts. I was in a room with 200 people and there was this collective groan. He said, no, you would begin to know so much freedom because you know that you you learn to not take what I call this storyteller, that the judger is a part of it. You learn how to not take it seriously. Okay. And the more you can welcome this stuff rather than fall into it or try to get away from it, the more you begin to realize that life is for you. It's a highly intelligent process. Eckhart Tolle, author of Power of Now, New Earth, he has this most wonderful quote. I just love it. He said, life will give you the exact set of experiences you need in order to become a conscious human being. Excuse me, that was my cat that jumped <laughs> off my lap. I've got the first cat in the summit, so it's okay. <laughs> oh, they love this energy. They know this energy. Yeah. So Eckhart, life will give you the exact set of experiences you need in order to become a conscious human being or what we're talking about in order to come home to our heart because that's where consciousness lies. Mm -hmm. How do we know they're the right set? Because you're having them. Now, that's our that's minds, that's it, it, yeah, our minds would never ever agree with that because they are liking to dislike and they're always trying to get to the good stuff and get rid of the bad. And that is what I call the bubble of struggle, this small opaque bubble that is floating on the ocean of being, which is who we really are. And as we learn how to bring more home to our heart, we begin to see we're not alone. And life is for us. And we begin to move out of the victim mode into what I call the curiosity mode. We're fascinated. We wake up in, this, in the morning and most days, not all days, most days, we are open. We say to life, I will be as open as I possibly can today to what you are bringing me because I know you are speaking to me in all ways. Oh, the joy of that. And that comes from lessening, loosening the armoring around our hearts mm -hmm. and then coming home to our hearts. It's so important to say this. We think it is selfish to fall in love with ourselves. It is selfful. Oh. It is the most important task that we have been given. Yeah. Yeah. I love that self mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. And the mind will say it's selfish. Nope, nope, can't listen to myself. Mm -hmm. Can't listen to what is calling me. Can't trust my own resonance, my own inner wisdom. And we can, and we need you, we need you. Mm -hmm. And especially for me, it's women that are going to be leading this shift in consciousness that's happening on our planet. Yeah. There's so much of it happening right now. And I just feel so grateful to be part of it. And actually, even though there's a lot of stuff that's happening right now that isn't, you know, people aren't happy about, it's still yeah. serving, it still has a purpose. Yeah. And that's the way I look at it. Because yeah. like what you were saying, what we're experiencing is part of the challenges that we go through yeah. to learn how to expand ourselves yeah. and part of the lessons yeah. that we're here for. Yeah. Our challenges are not here, whether they're health challenges, relationship challenges, financial challenges, uh, compulsion challenges, political challenges. They are not here because we have done something wrong or God has fallen asleep on the job, whatever God is. They are here because they are tailor-made and to help us. In fact, to me, uh, you step back and you look at the evolution of life on this planet and every single time it's gone into a new phase that 
as the old phase is dying, it is a little bit chaotic there as the new is being born. And so politically, we can see in the U.S. the old kind of mind, the you know kind of mind that we have a president that that makes fun of other people that lies and exaggerates. I'm not judging him. I really respect his soul for taking on that role of being this old kind of mind so more and more of us can see that's not how I want to live. I want to live from the aware heart. Hmm. Yeah, there are so many people that are, I think, placed as catalysts for change. Yes. And so he's one of them. He is. Yeah. He is. And our job, my job, is to keep him in my heart. And I don't always do that, you know. Yeah. And, right. and sometimes there's just this seizing up. But again, what happens when I do that? My heart closes. Right. And so I have really deepened, especially in the last year, of the ability to meet him in my heart, you know, to see that the kind of struggle that he lives in. I would love to go back for a day into his childhood and just see what happened to him that he ended up being this kind of human being. And again, like you said, he's a catalyst. Thank you, Donald Trump. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. And I think that is the highest perspective and the highest love that we can hold for others. Yeah. <laughs> um, since you've been talking about unarmoring your heart, can you share methods with the audience in ways that they might be able to um, do that? First of all, listen to this a few times. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's the heart, it's learning a language. It's a different language than the head doing, trying, comparing, judging, getting, and I'm not saying, uh, we do need to do that. We do need to do that at times to maneuver, but we're caught in it. So as much as possible, you know, uh, uh, listen to things that speak about the language of the aware heart. The second thing would be to really know, know, deep inside of you that you've always done the best that you knew how. Always. You know, we're very young, we're wide open, we're innocent. There's not a thought in our head when we were first born. And then we took on all this conditioning and we absorbed it from our parents and our teachers and, you know, religious institutions and, and, you know, what our culture, you know, says. And we had no choice in that. Mm -hmm. And so I say to people, you know, whatever language, you know, because I too talk to people all around the world, what, you know, did you have any choice to absorb the language of your culture? When you were young, no, you didn't, because that was what's spoken all around you. We also don't have the choice of the conditioning of this survival system that we all took on. Mm -hmm. And so the, we go unconscious and the survival system runs us and we go to our compulsions to try to get away from all the pain of that. When I first began to be able to look back with my heart, it first began to happen with just this arising of all the, I was going to use the word stupid, that's not the right way to say it, but all the unskillful things that I did when I was truly unconscious. And for years, something would arise inside of me and oh, my heart would just seize up. But slowly and surely, these things would arise just as memories. And I was able to say to that younger self, you did the best that you knew how with the conditioning that you have been given. I think the third thing we've already talked about, so very, very important, that um, uh, to realize that this judging voice that started when you were very young never knows the truth. 
And in fact, if your listeners want to, you know, you'll give the, my website and go to the contact page and Deborah is the first uh, email, email her and I will send you the Disarming the Judger chapter from my book, Belonging to Life. It's just, it's one of the most important things we can do in this journey is to realize that this cruel, cruel, at times, very cruel voice inside of us is not and has never been the truth. And I think the last thing is mirror work. So it, many years ago, when the woman I would walk through a lot of this with said, I want you to go home and look in the mirror, I couldn't do it because I saw such self revulsion. And so then we started with my hand, you know, and just look at my hand and see my hand and begin to realize all my, that my hand did for me. And slowly and surely, it took a number of years. I began to be able to look in the mirror and not just want to throw up. Mm -hmm. And it took a number of years more also to be able to look into my eyes and meet myself in my own heart. And this year it's been very challenging. I've had two major surgeries and uh, there's been a lot of pain and a lot of non-sleep and so on and so forth. But again, life will give us the exact set of experiences we need. And I've grown immensely. Oh. And I've spent a lot of time winking at myself yeah. in the mirror mm -hmm. and just loving myself. It, it is the greatest joy in my life to come home to my heart. And I know uh, one other thing that because your listeners are listening, they are on the path. I don't care what is happening in their life. If they're suicidal, they're overly compulsive, you know, they, they are in a horrible relationship. They don't think they can get out. They have just declared bankruptcy. You are on the path back to your aware heart and know that there's two people that are holding for you, that you will remember this, that you will know that you can trust yourself, you can trust your life, and slowly and surely, you will come home to your heart. We need you. We need you. <laughs> yes, yes. Oh, thank you for saying that because that is something that I don't think I've said yet. Is if you're watching this and yeah. this video and anything in the series, you're on the path. Yeah. Your energy has led you here for a reason. Yeah. 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 And if you don't have somebody in your life, that you feel can be a mentor. I mean, you know, here are the two of us, but you know, you may not be able to reach out. But to me, I just, I could not have grown out of that deep, deep darkness that I lived in without the power of asking questions, without looking for the answer. It was Gertrude Stein that said, the power of a question is not in getting the answer. It's in the questions themselves. And so you, you may want to ask like, what are my questions? But in this you know, conversation we're having now, one of the most important things that you can ask life is, I'm ready. Please show me the way back home to my heart. And I think that curiosity is really important. And the turning it over to life, that's what asking a question without looking for an answer. Mm -hmm. There's a power in that. You create a vacuum in the universe. And when I train people this at the beginning, they say, oh, it's not working. You know, I say, just keep on asking. And slowly and surely, you will see that there's something there with you, supporting you, allowing you to live the answer. Mm -hmm. And you have a wonderful gift for the audience today, too. Um, $200, one of 
off of one of your interactive course, online courses, which is being healed by our compulsions, which yes. starts Oh yes, end of January, January it, end of January. Oh yeah. yes, I'm so, so excited. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We wanted to really uh, two hundred dollars off. Yay, team! Because we need people to to enter this journey. And you know, it it, it talks about compulsions. We could be compulsive about anything. Worrying food, drugs, alcohol, uh, biting our fingernails, shopping, you know, you name it, screen time. But our core compulsion is to struggle. And all the other compulsions are an attempt to numb out from the heartache, the unease of that struggle. And when you learn how to unhook from struggle, which is this mind, it's always trying to get to the good stuff and leave the bad stuff behind. And I ask people, has it ever brought you the lasting peace you long for? You know, but as you learn how to unhook from the struggle itself, mm -hmm. your compulsions fall away because you no longer need them. Mm -hmm. Powerful, powerful. And thank you for sharing that um, with us and giving the audience the the amazing offer to join you join yeah. you there so mm -hmm. um thank you so much for your time Mary, oh, and your energy and your heart mm -hmm. and um all of your expertise around this i think you are such a light yeah so i appreciate yeah. you and I invite everybody just for a moment just to see the planet in their mind's eye Ooh. and just see all these women because it's probably going to be mainly women you know, drawn to this conversation. Mm -hmm. And I just invite you to see this heart opening and this heart opening and this heart opening so much that you see this big heart that surrounds the mm -hmm. whole earth. <laughs> we're where the healing is going to happen. Yes, absolutely. We're all connected. So we're all doing it together. We are. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. And thank you to our audience and the viewers today. Um, I'd love to hear what resonated with you the most about the interview today with Mary. So just hit reply and let me know what your takeaways were for today. And obviously, don't forget to grab her free gift. So um, thank you so much. And we will see you soon for another episode of Embrace Your Unique Self. So thank you, you guys. And thank you, Mary. Bye. Mm -hmm. Bye. <laughs>